We're with Chris Berlay on the floor of PDAC 2024. You're the founder and the CEO for Mineral Prices and MineralFunds.com, yes? Yes, that's right, Tracy. Thank you. So Chris, what are your objectives this week at PDAC? Myself personally? Well, for mineral prices and mineral funds. Uh, mineral prices and mineral funds. Looking at the critical minerals for mineral prices, there's a lot of change, a lot of interest in that sector. Uh, and, and uh, you know, attending the how to finance, how they intend to finance a lot of the, you know, pending requirements for these metals and the other metals. Um, so I'm, I'm, I'm spending some time doing that. I'm talking to um, some specific project managers about stuff that I'm interested in. So, and then uh, with respect to the funds, um, just I was meeting some of the uh, some of the suppliers downstairs and determining how we might be able to help them. So um, the reason I got so interested in mineralprices.com, it's very hard to find reliable places to get prices for the minerals. And of course, you also happen to be basically an industry expert. Would you call yourself that for, say, gold, for instance? On managed funds, sure. I do know, have studied them very carefully, understand that market quite well. Well, I can assure you that's quite an understatement based on what I know about you. So let's talk about gold. I'm going to ask you a couple of questions, starting with the price of gold right now and the market for gold. Where do you see it right now and where do you see it going in 2024? You know, it's very difficult. I listened to a, to a, a very good presentation there. It's difficult to predict the price of gold. Supply and demand characteristics are not like other metals. Um, but I see central bank buying and I've seen ETF selling and I see, uh, you know, significant issues in, in, in with the balance sheet, central bank balance sheets. And uh, I see much higher gold prices and ultimately and silver also over the uh, at, at using gold as a medium of exchange. So these arguments have been around for some time. Some of the people are a lot smarter, a lot wealthier than me. We're bullish on this, talking about the end of dollar hegemony uh, quite some time ago. I think it's easy to predict direction. It's more difficult to prediction. It's almost impossible to predict direction and timing at the same, in the same, in, you know, in the same way accurately. And so they were absolutely correct. Ultimately, there's going to be a significant revision of dollar uh, valuation. Uh, dollar hegemony will end probably in, in my life thing, depending on, on uh, on, on how long you live and in what time frame, but um, I think we're getting closer to that. So I see ultimately significantly higher prices for, for precious metals. Okay, so you see ultimately higher prices in precious metals, both gold and silver or just gold? Both. Okay, I know you follow a lot of the different mineral prices because that's why you're mineralprices.com. And of course, mineralprices.com is a partner with investornews.com. Um, can we talk about some of the other minerals that you are particularly fond of? Can you pick a mineral that you're enjoying the most? Copper, uranium? These are metals that are in good shape. There's lots written about them. What we're looking at carefully and what's changing quite rapidly is the critical minerals and the critical mineral list. So in conjunction with the Critical Mineral Institute, um, you know, the, the European Critical Raw Material Act, uh, the Inflation Reduction Act, uh, the the uh, the critical mineral uh, uh, policies of both uh, Canada and Australia they define what critical minerals are. So today we have a list. Uh, we have lists of critical minerals for the EU, for the UK, for the United States, Canada, uh, Japan, South Korea, and Australia. Seven seven separate critical minerals lists. There's two for the United States and two for Australia, um, and. Uh, and these, the governments have established these lists because of the priorities that the metals on them uh, and minerals on them uh, have for their economic development. So that, that's, that's interesting because it's new. They're defining them. They're defining what they are. Uh, we're, we're looking at pricing. How do we provide most accurate and timely uh, uh, and comprehensive pricing for those minerals? Um, and and we're, we're looking at a pretty dynamic market. It's changing regularly. So. Um, you know, the, uh, the most comprehensive list is South Korea. They're importing all of them, 35 critical minerals on their list. So that's, that's, our, that's the area of the metals and minerals market that we're looking at more, most closely now, beginning of 2024. Okay, so you're looking at the critical mineral hit list, of course, that we follow at the Critical Mineral <laughs> Institute. Can you tell me, is there a particular critical mineral in particular that is most exciting to you? 
personally or professionally? Scandium, niobium, scandium, uh, its applications in aluminum, light metal, and, and the significant impact that small amounts of scandium can have. On, but, you know, in aggregate, no. We're, in, there's nothing, I would say, that, uh, that is of particular interest. You know, a lot of the concern has been around supply chains. So we look at, uh, we look at first of all, the definition of what those critical minerals are. So the governments have been good at doing that. And then the markets will lend themselves to the solution for, for the supply of those minerals. First, identify what they are, who they're critical for, um, and for which applications. And so they each have their own. In the United States, you have the Department of Energy has a list and you have the USGS has a list. In Australia, you have the... Uh, strategic metals list, and then you have a critical minerals list. And the others just identify the, the list of what they determine to be critical minerals, and then the market can start to fill in the gaps and provide those minerals from uh, safe jurisdictions in the most economic way feasible. Um, so talk to me about pricing and trends. What trends do you see? Uh, increasing transparency. So markets have changed uh, and continue to change with electronic platforms. Um, so we're seeing increasing transparency, availability of price information, uh, transparency about, um, about critical minerals, critical mineral lists, and, and, uh, and, and then we're, we're participating by providing pricing for that. You have also, um, you have also uh, supply chain, uh, uh, the characteristics of supply chains where you have responsible sourcing. So we're able to start to identify, that's important, and, and it can be quantified. And so with, with uh, the distribution of information and the uh, distribution of electronic platforms, we can do a better job today of, of, uh, of, of ensuring and identifying which particular metals from which sources uh, are, are being res sourced responsibly. Uh, it's an issue for certain metals more than others. Um, so electronic platforms facilitate that process and accelerate that process. That's a good thing. Um, and then the last is, um, is that we just, uh, you know, we provide more comprehensive real-time information to the fullest extent that we can. In a 24-hour world, you can get most metals 24 hours a day, not, not as it used to be a decade ago, only when the London Metal Exchange traded and, or Chicago Mercantile Exchange or Osaka Mercantile Exchange, we can now 24-hour pricing for most, most exchange-traded metals. And then they're adding to... You're also seeing uh, advances in direct producer to consumer. So these proliferation of electronic platforms and what we're doing, providing price information, enhances that process. So you're getting, uh, you're getting increased transparency, you're getting benefits of, of supply chain um, uh, responsible sourcing uh, identification, and you're also having benefits of, uh, of uh, transparency with accelerated trading between producers and consumers of metals. Well, Chris, we wish you luck at PDAC this year. And for everybody out there interested in finding out more about mineralprices.com, go to their website. Thank you, Tracy.